Hi, it's Laura at Aquamarine 18. Thanks for stopping by my channel today. Welcome or welcome back. In this video, I will be sharing my way overdue VR to the tag Top 10 Curiosity Decks by Lovely Candy at Candy Soul and Soil. This has been a VR that I've wanted to make for quite some time. I enjoyed Candy's video about decks that are curious, decks that would live in a cabinet of curiosities or that, that stoke our curiosity in one way or another, or just are a little bit different. And I've made my list of decks and I just have been having so much trouble lately getting to film the tags that I've wanted to film. I think with the shift, you know, from less regular work to a nine to five schedule and with some weekends being quite busy, I just haven't had the, the time to do the tags in a timely fashion, <laughs> but better late than never. So before I get into my top 10 curiosity decks, I wanted to just share two other little curiosities that would be in my curiosity cabinet. One is this cat with flowers on it. And this cat is one that I found in a antique shop and I really liked it. And it was just up by the counter um, where you pay for things. And I was with my mom and she was, you know, choosing something else and I really just liked this cat and the shop just gave it to me. <laughs> I don't think they had, you know, thought that maybe anybody would buy it. So I would put this one in my cabinet of curiosities. I would also put this little blue friend in the cabinet of curiosities and what this one does is it holds it has a little divot on the top so it holds glasses and this feels curious to me so that would be in my cabinet of curiosities as well the decks in no particular order the first deck that i would put in my cabinet of curiosities is a deck that has recently come available i'm so glad that it has it is now on i believe game crafter and that is none other than the Ocean Dry Tarot. I love this deck uh, by Paul and Campbell. It's beautiful. Um, and it is a hip deck, which I love. Um, the miners are just gorgeous. Um, and there's a whole color system to this deck. And this deck is a curiosity because there's so much system built into this deck. And it's all really unique to this deck. So the different colors, you know, that are used in the different miners all have significance. The major arcana have been completely reordered. So here you can see the star is card 20. And Colin has a beautiful kind of guided meditation uh, video on his channel going through the story of the majors of this deck. And I would say that even if you you don't have this deck or you don't necessarily intend to get this deck, it's a really beautiful video to watch. Um, but this deck certainly, um, you know, activates my curiosity as I feel like it's one that there is, you know, on the one hand, the imagery could feel simple. It's a, you know, it's a pip deck. You can just read it as a pip deck as you would any other. But there's so much layered into a deck with the sun as card zero, you know. There's so, oh, I really like how that looks with my glasses also. <laughs> There's so much in this deck to explore in terms of the, the uniqueness of its system. And so for that reason, it's a curiosity deck. The next deck that I will mention is a curiosity deck is the Nomad Tarot. This is by Jennifer Drantel. I don't know if this deck is in stock or not, uh, or like in, in stock, in print or not. I, I know there's been a couple of, um, iterations of this deck or like not iterations but um, like printings and it is a very elemental deck you know feathers for for the air suit here and shells for the water suit the thing that is curious to me about this deck is that there are some major arcana cards in this deck that have very um, unique symbolism that is unlike any kind of symbolism that I've seen for that particular card in any other deck. And the guidebook says nothing about it. <laughs> so I'm just trying to find the most obvious examples of of what I mean. Yeah, here's a couple of them. Okay. So basically this deck is curious because I have no idea 
why no idea why strength is a chicken i'm curious as to why i could come up with reasons why i might make a chicken the strength card but the book gives no indication <laughs> whatsoever of why the chicken is strength it also doesn't give any indication of why the wolf is a hermit which i think is interesting i mean i'm assuming it's a wolf and not a dog wolves do not live alone I mean, I guess we have a phrase lone wolf, but wolves are very much pack animals with very complex social structures. So thinking of it as a hermit um, is a bit unusual to me. Um, the, you know, the judgment card has this big moon that's looming over this house. You know, I can read with it and I enjoy this deck, um, but there are just there are just some cards that I am very curious about because they are not explained in the book. <laughs> so that's why that deck is a curiosity deck for me. It's a deck that I quite like, but who knows why the chicken is strength. If you know, let me know below. If you have a theory, let me know below. Uh, the next one that I will mention, and I'm not going in any order other than the order that they are in the pile. Um, this is the philosophy cards. And it is an existential tarot deck by Melanie Maschio with drawings by Tom McCloskey. This is a deck that I found on um, Kickstarter. And it's again based in existential philosophy. And that's why it's a curiosity deck to me. The illustrations are beautiful, quite unconventional for a tarot deck. Um, there's a lot in this deck that is... Um, very different. So one of the suits is, is reason. And another is action. And another is emotion. And the other one is... What? Will. So these are important, um, you know, concepts in existential philosophy. And the majors are concepts in existential philosophy as well. New Dawn the madman and so you know Zarathustra is in as the hermit which makes sense this is a curiosity deck for me because again it is very different than a standard tarot deck and also because I think existential philosophy is really interesting and I think philosophy in general is really interesting and curious and I have a minor in philosophy in my degree my first degree and I've done a lot of philosophy in graduate school as well. And so anything that, you know, prompts me to think about philosophy is a curiosity to me. And the guidebook, which is a little white book, does have quite a bit of substance in terms of explaining some of the ideas quite well in quite a small amount of space. So I like that as a curiosity deck. Next curiosity deck I have here. I should have unwrapped things ahead of time, taking less time. The next curiosity deck I would put in the cabinet of curiosities is the Hollow Valley Tarot. And this one just, you know, I don't know if there's something curious about this deck per se, but really it's just that these cards are full of so many little symbols. So you can see here we have chicken feet and what I believe are roses, crystals, horns or antlers a moth so this is a deck that to me is full of little curiosities this is a deck that to me is most like itself is most like a curiosity cabinet you know a cabinet full of herbs and spices and you know animal encyclopedias and little stones and rocks and bits of things found in nature This deck feels like a curiosity cabinet to me. Lots of candles, elemental symbols, astrological symbols throughout the deck. So this one feels like a curiosity cabinet to me and made it onto my list of curiosities on that basis. I took the word curious and just kind of you know, let's see where I end up and picked the decks that spoke to me with that prompt. I interpreted things quite loosely here. 
The next one that I will say is a curiosity deck. Is a curiosity deck because it's one that prompts me to do lots of learning. It's a very, it's also very slippery um, linen cardstock here, and that is the La Flora Tarot. Beautiful, also one that you might see, you know, a book of these images in a curiosity cabinet. But each card has a flower or plant and it has its Latin name and its English name. You can see there. And this is a curiosity deck for me because I don't know much about plants. <laughs> but the guidebook uh, is, is very substantial, has um, a pretty extensive bibliography for every single card the uh, author created a bibliography. And so explains why each flower or plant is paired with each card in terms of the card's meaning. And some of that is medicinal properties, some of that is lore, um, you know, or literary references. There's all kinds of different intersecting forms of knowledge that go into thinking about why each one goes with each, you know, the sunflower is fairly obvious, but but a lot of them for me are not, you know, I would not necessarily know why the Villos pitcher plant is the queen of cups, other than that the pitcher, I guess, is, is slightly cup looking. Um, but the book is really interesting. And so this deck makes me curious to learn more about plants. And it also just has this kind of aesthetic that feels a little bit curiosity cabinet to me as well. So. The La Flora Tarot would be in my cabinet of curiosities. Try to put things away here so as not to make a great big mess. <laughs> uh, how many do I have left? That's five. I have five more to go. Okay. The Margareta Peterson would be a curiosity deck to me. And that's just because these images are so different and so unconventional. And I'm sure that folks have seen this, this deck. The imagery is very abstract. You know, the, the names of the cards are straightforward enough. They're elemental suits, but you don't see, for example, four of anything in the four of flames. I mean, four corners of the square, I suppose, but um, they're not straightforwardly representative in terms of the artwork. It's also not a pip deck. It's really its own kind of style. And it's curious because it really, I think, compels you to just sink into the images and explore and see what you can see that maybe you never saw the last time that you looked at this deck. There's a lot to discover in these images and the more you look at them, the closer you look, you start to see things, you know, in the layers and in the backgrounds that you might not have seen the last time that you looked. I find this deck challenging um, to work with sometimes, but also very beautiful and curious because it's one that needs a lot of um, time spent with it, looking at the images, I think, and that, that has to do with curiosity, right? Next up, I will share, I have these, I've been getting these wraps. These are from um, Marie, whose shop on Etsy is called Ginkgo and the Crone, and I really like these wraps. She made me a big one when I needed one in a weird size, which I appreciated. Um, this deck that is a curiosity deck is the Tildwick Tarot by Neil Lovell. And this is the second edition um, that sadly was released following uh, the creator's passing. So there's a card in here about, about Neil. And this deck 
is a curious mansion of a deck that you know is one to explore and reading with this deck feels like wandering around in a you know old perhaps abandoned house full of curiosities like a house size curiosity cabinet and there's all different just artworks and and little kind of items that would have belonged to the people and in the cards you can find the representation of the um the pip so here in the five of swords you know it's a it's a room it looks like some peeling wallpaper and a broken window but if you look here hopefully it will pick up there's the five swords there so there's lots to see in this deck lots of symbolism in this deck to think about and to interpret and to let your curiosity uh, take you where it will take you cameras don't do this deck justice i thought when i saw it i wasn't quite sure how i would feel about this deck like i know that the kind of imagery of interiors as a as a theme for a deck really appealed to me i really like the decks that I have that have kind of architectural aspects or spatial aspects. Um, but sometimes on camera, this deck looks really muddy and it doesn't really capture the beauty of the colors. But definitely a curiosity deck. A, a whole house of curiosities captured in a deck. So definitely curious. That is the Tildwick Tarot by Neil Lovell. The next deck I have chosen is an Oracle deck, um, and that is the deck for Wonder Walking by Amy T. Wan. And this is a deck that, in my mind, is designed to invite you to chase your curiosity out in the world. Because the idea is for these cards to inspire you going on a walk inspire you to look for particular things to observe particular things see how particular things make you feel or impact you see if you can find things on your walk that you've never noticed before even if it's a, a route that you take often and the big book that comes separately has a lot of different prompts for thinking about different things that are points of curiosity and you can read with this as an oracle deck. You don't have to use it um, in conjunction with walking if you don't want to. It's beautiful watercolor. But to me, this is a deck that really embodies the spirit of curiosity because the entire point is to, uh, you know, take what might be just a kind of routine, you know, walking from point A to point B that you do a lot that isn't necessarily something that you're, you know, really doing in a reflective um, way and giving it new life with uh, prompts to explore what you see and what's around you and what you hear. And so I think that this is a deck that really um, is a is a curious one. And it says it's a deck for connecting to nature and creativity for the wonder seeking creative soul the poet the artist the eternal child 48 walking cards and a pocket field guide and this one to me is definitely one that inspires curiosity and invites you to let it run you know let it do what it will do so that's eight the last two i'm going to share are the two newest decks to my collection so that is tarot of the silicon dawn is one of them and this deck is a curiosity. Um, it's by Egypt Ernash. Um, it has 99 cards. So that's curious, right? Um, from the beginning, right? And it shows in here a kind of structure of the deck, the different suits. And so I don't know what kind of order I have this in right now. I'm on the hunt for a good bag for this deck because the box, it's in two piles, which is not my favorite. Uh, there's a lot of very unconventional cards in this deck. Um, there's a history card. There's many different fool cards. 
and there are also a an entire suit of kind of extras. I'm not sure where they are. There's an extra zero at the end of the Major Arcana that's not a fool, but is a zero. You know, and the the imagery is is curious. It's very it's very alien. It's a whole world unto itself, um, and I think that that's really interesting and really curious. So there's in in the extra suit, you know, there's a card, um, there's a card eight and a half. There's a card zero to the power of minus one. Um, each suit, in addition to having a one to ten, also has a ninety-nine. You know, and and all of that with this kind of imagery that's inspired, I think, by um, science fiction and by kind of gaming. And so it's a curious deck. There's so much unusual about it, and I've still even got it in order because I've been just looking at the book and looking at each card and trying to figure out, you know, how am I even going to work with this deck in terms of all these extra cards? You know, what is the way to engage with this deck in the way that it is, right? Because I'm not, I mean, you could always just say, okay, I'm going to put out all the extra cards and not work with them and read it with 78 cards as a tarot. But like, I'm not really interested in doing that. I want to um, explore the deck as it is, right? And so that one is a curiosity because it's just so far outside of what a tarot deck tends to look like even in terms of number of cards number of suits uh, it's very creative in that way so that's curiosity and my last one of the 10 i think i've shown all 10 i've got i'm surrounded by things here i hope i didn't miss anybody okay the last curiosity deck is that julie made me do it um uh, terror of the cat people and this is a curiosity because it's a it's a world, right? It's a it's a society of people with particular relationships to particular kinds of cats and particular kinds of relationships to each other because there's different kind of communities of people who are represented with different cultures and languages and and styles and religious practices and you know ways of organizing socially and and all of that is in the guidebook and all of that is in the cards. And I haven't found them yet, but there are a couple of novels that are even set in this cat people world. You know, and there's cat, like this cat is floating in a force field. The cat's very, ha this cat is very happy. Um, I know from the guidebook. Uh, so this is such a curiosity because it's like an entire universe. And all the ways that science fiction lets your curiosity, you know, go all over the place, this deck does as well. And some of the imagery is just curious because without, you know, especially without reference to the book, sometimes, you know, it's like, why are there all of these cat heads floating along in bubbles, right? That's, that's curious. This cat is also very happy. <laughs> Why is there a cat head balancing on top of this guy's head, right? It's curious, but the book tells you in this case. And there's lots to, to learn. And I think that you could read this, this without reference to all of that. But for me, it's so much more fun, you know, to get into that, that science fictional world. So that is why that one is curiosity deck for me. I can't believe that I didn't make this tag take an hour. I tried to really consciously... <laughs> <laughs> to not be too, you know, rambly as I am. Thank you so much for watching my very late VR. Thank you to Candy at Candy Soul and Soil for starting the top 10 curiosity decks. I had a lot of fun doing a VR and I've really enjoyed uh, the ones that I've seen and look forward to seeing some more. Have a good one and I'll see you soon.